Hello everyone. How are you doing today? It is Sunday here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, I'm going to finally get around to do a video. As you can see, it's dark outside, so I've been wanting to do this all day, and um, I just got started. I, well, I had to clean up my, my studio area, and then that got me into the kitchen. I was cleaning that up, and next thing you know, I was doing laundry, and I'm like, I gotta do, I gotta do this video. So, um, I did post, uh, I don't know if you saw my Instagram account, a, like a one minute little reel of painting one of these. And so I will post the finished picture, um, when I get them glazed. I'm probably going to take it to, uh, well, I'll probably take it to where I work to get it glazed, put it in the kiln there because I, I'm still trying to do enough stuff here um, and greenware to fill the bisqueware kiln. <laughs> I used to do a lot more pottery at home and now um, it seems like I've been doing more where I work at and I've been painting as you if you follow me you know I've been dabbling in some painting and stuff. So um, but anyway so this is what this is what I'm working on today. This is kind of was inspired by a painting that I saw and I thought it was a real soft color. Um, I am not going to outline these in black. <laughs> so if you know me, you know that's it's really hard for me not to get that liner out and outline these in black. But the painting was real soft and I thought, you know, I'm going to do them without the black liner. So this is how they'll be, only they'll be shiny so i hope you can hope you can tell that enough for now but like i said i will um as soon as i get them fired i'll update the photo and put a photo on there of how this will how this will look when they're fired i know people like to see them instantly but um i'm not a production potter so i don't um i don't i don't fire a lot um you know i don't make I used to make a lot more than I used to now. Um, but anyway, um, so enough talking. Someone someone did post that uh, less talking, more instruction. So <laughs> I, should, I should get busy, right? <laughs> I should. I wanted to post back that you know. Um, I'm probably not the potter for you to watch then, <laughs> because I do tend to talk a lot, right? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? It's not just about pottery. It's about having fun. It's about talking. It's about, you know, chit-chatting about our day. You know, get yourself a little drink. I've got some iced tea here. Although, it's supposed to keep me awake, but it's not really doing a very good job. <laughs> so grab a drink. Grab your paintbrush. And let's get painting some mugs with amico velvet underglazes <laughs> i don't know if the kitty cats will show up or not i moved their boxes over here because when i was cleaning up um i don't know i've been trying to rearrange stuff try to see what works best and i got my overalls on today i feel like i'm kind of like farmer lisa i don't know <laughs> you can kind of see them anyway i hope you guys are doing good Okay, so I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing here. This is my, as you can see, my paint palette because I have been painting some of the other ones. And oh, this is things heavy. Goodness, can I get that in the picture? This is my, how I use my underglazes. I'm a watercolor painter at heart. Or really I guess um, I try that's what I should say I try to be a watercolor painter by heart I'm not the best painter I do love it but I will admit I'm not the best <laughs> but you know it's it's kind of about the fun right so I use amigo velvet underglazes um, I've love I love them I love the colors. I think they're rich colors. I don't think they're watered down very much. Um, I think they're very well pigmented. Um, I fired a cone five 
and um, they really don't burn out. Sometimes I've had the the red burnout, and sometimes this avocado green um, burns out a little bit. But I try to make sure I put three coats on. So um, that really that really helps. Now I don't have a problem um, with them sticking to the kiln shelf if I paint on the bottom. But I will tell you that um, one of my mugs, I I had a little hairline crack in the very bottom. And I thought, I'm just going to see. I was testing this bisque fix. Um, I don't know if I've got, oh, this is the best stuff. Mako came out with this. It is like, um, Amico's got a bisque fix, but it's like $22 for a little jar, same size as this. This is Mako's. Um, it's called AC306 Clay Mender. You can use this for bisqueware or greenware. Now, I will tell you, if you put it on bisqueware, um, the glazes do not adhere to it in the same manner as if the glazes were on plain bisqueware or greenware. Um, because this is a much, I want to say, like tighter formula. It's, um, it's not as porous as clay. Um, that's why I guess it's, you know, so good, but, um, but it's really good stuff. But so because it doesn't adhere, the glaze is the same where you put it on bisqueware, you will see that white mark of where it is. So anyway, so the reason I'm getting to that is um, so I put more coats of underglaze over the bottom to cover that up. And because I had like four or five coats, it did get kind of shiny and it did stick to the kiln shelf a little bit. Not not really bad, but just to let you know that um, I think any underglaze will probably stick to the kiln shelf a little bit, not like a regular glaze, if you put on enough coats. So, with that being said, um, let me, so I have done this a couple ways, and I really like this little, I don't know where I got this from, but it's a little, any, any little sponge will work. It doesn't have to be like this, but um, this, this, this poor little guy is wearing down. So, but I'm going to sponge this on. So... I'm going to start with green on the bottom. This is avocado green. And if you can see avocado in my tray right here. Let's see. There we go. And I've added, let's see. I added a little blue to this because I want the stems of the flowers to be a little bit darker. But I don't want all of it to be darker. So I'm going to get some of the plain avocado out here where I don't that I did so, you know this is um, I did not add the blue to it it's plain avocado is what I'm trying to get at but I don't know I was, I was yawning before and I thought God, how am I gonna do a video if I'm yawning <laughs> our dog Archie is um, He's going to be 15 in July, and he's not doing all that well. So he gets us up at night sometimes, and last night was kind of a rough night with him. I don't know how many days he has left on this earth, but um, our other two are gone already. I know some people watch some of my older videos with Ernie and Sophie in them, but... They have both passed away, so we've got Archie and the two cats, Millie and Molly. And uh, pretty soon we won't have Archie, I guess. All right, so you see I've just got some, some paint on this sponge.
It today reminded me of um, when I was talking the last time in my video how it's sometimes it's hard to, you know, sit and do artwork when I know there's laundry and other things to be done when you have a studio in your house. If you have a studio outside your house, you're not, you know, seeing all this housework that needs to be done and you're not feeling guilty for not doing it. But I did get a load of laundry done today and like I said, then I cleaned up my, my studio. I had stuff everywhere here. And um, and it's easier for me to work. Isn't it easier for you to work too if you um, you know your studio is clean? I don't know. I it's hard for me to concentrate when my studio has a bunch of stuff sitting all over the place. I kind of get overwhelmed by. If I let myself get involved in too many projects, I want to do, I want to do, uh, well, I've got a list of things I want to make for plates, little plates and um, some little watermelon plates. And gosh, I got, I can't remember what's on my list. I have to make a list nowadays or I forget. But I have stuff I want to make to fill up the kiln. And um, and then I want to go to my stained glass. I keep promising you guys um, my next video. Well, I should say my next video. But I am going to make some picture frames because I want to I want to make a whole bunch of uh, ceramic frames for my stained glass to get that started. Um, I'm going to do them a little bit differently than when I did them originally. And I'll show you guys how how the new way is going to be. So by sponging this on, I'm making sure that I have, you know, three coats on here. Okay. So... That's how that looks. So I'm going to rinse out my sponge. And the next color I'm going to go to is this yellow. Now this is intense yellow with white added. So I'm going to kind of go over here. And I'm overlapping the green a little bit. I've been watching all these abstract art videos and I thought, you know, I can incorporate some of that into my pottery painting. It's not quite as easy um, because, you know, if you put the underglazes on thin like you do in some of the um, watercolor videos and that put them on too thin they'll burn out at cone five now if you're doing low fire you really don't you really don't have to worry about them burning out they uh, they, they stay very vivid very pretty okay so I think so there's the second one I'm going to get a touch of orange here. Now this is intense orange and bright orange mixed together, which which was an accident. When I was filling up my tray, I was thinking that it was bright orange that was in here, and it wasn't. It was an intense orange. So I scooped some of it out into the other side. Um... I didn't get it all out, but that's okay. I next time I get some intense orange, I will. Um, I'll just pour it in. Pour it in over that. It won't matter. I don't know if you can see, but I so can you see? I just put a little bit of yellow on there. I'm sorry, orange. 
See how it's blended really nice? Now the first cup I did, I used the brush, but I really like how the sponge works. Um, you do have to be careful when you're using a sponge though. It tends to be a little rougher surface. So remember when it's dry, before you put your clear glaze on, brush it off and smooth down any bumps because the bumps will come through your clear glaze. They'll poke through and you'll see this, uh, well, like a little matted spot. And then you'll have to touch it up and then you'll have to reglaze it and then you'll have to refire it. And we know how much we hate refires, right? Okay, so this is turquoise here. And um, now this is actually Speedball turquoise. Oh, now well that is too, well that's weird. Let me add a little bit of water to it. It's kind of a weird texture. So when I'm using this tray, for those of you who are new to the channel, um, if I'm going to leave it for more than, oh, three months, six months and not come back to it, which is very, very rare. I mean, I, I never, I, I never not use it for that long, but I would probably mist it with a little bit of water if I was going to leave it for that long. Um, but for the most part, I, I never add any, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't add water to it when I close it up. When I open it back up, if there's something that's a little dry, um, then I'll mist it a little bit. But the reason I put them in here is because the water evaporates that's in the glaze. And um, this is really going on weird. Um, the water evaporates from the glaze and it makes the pigments, the, the stain, more intense. So you're basically, if you've, if you've seen Amico's semi-moist underglazes, they're, they're, they're very pricey. <laughs> and um, these are basically the same thing. This turquoise is really funky. Wow. I don't know. What the heck? So I was going to say, too, that you can... Um, let me squeeze this out. You can put Amico gum solution in your underglazes. Um, let's see if I got some here somewhere. Oh, I do. If your underglazes dry out completely, you can add a little bit of gum solution. But like for a, a, an amount like this that's in this tray, you would just add maybe maybe a quarter of a teaspoon because the gum solution will eventually oh I don't I don't know if it if it really goes bad but it stops working you never want to put it in your whole jar um, just put it put it in something that's small like this and then you can then as you add to your palette here you can always um, um, add more if you need it, but I would add water at first. I'm trying to, um, <laughs> figure out what I'm going to do about this turquoise. It's really bizarre. I hope I didn't put any. So, Amico, I don't know if any of you have any trout head, yeah. I don't know if any of you have had any trouble with your Amico gum solution, but um, I'm sure a lot of you are probably on Facebook on the Clay Buddies group, and they were talking about it on there a little bit, and I and I think that maybe a whole shipment of that froze, and now you know we've all been buying it. Because 
Um, I've been using it at work where I teach and it's ruining the glazes. Um, it's, I, I bought, well, um, it, Mako's clear glaze and it, it, it turned it into water. I put a tiny bit in and it just, it just made it so, it, it made the consistency like water which it's supposed to gel up it's it's basically like well like a gum solution is that's what it's called and it's supposed to like not thicken your glaze but make it more brushable um, adding gum solution to a commercial glaze a regular glaze not an underglaze adding a, a gum solution to that turns it from you know, like I said, a, di a dipping glaze to a brushing glaze makes it very brushable. And so if you have a glaze that you're applying to your piece and it, and it dries instantly and it's and it clunks up, just add a little bit of gum solution to it. But like I said, I think ours, ours has got a problem at work. I, I bought it from our local clay supplier. Ah, I cannot talk tonight. I bought it from our local clay supplier, and um, I kind of think it got, it froze in transition when they shipped it. And um, I don't know. I don't think it's any good anymore. So I bought some CMC powder, which is how you make gum solution, and. Um, if you want to do that, um, you need to take boiling water. It's a 1 to 10, probably like a 1 to 12 ratio. Um, but you have to mix it with boiling water because it wants to gel up instantly. And it's extremely hard to mix uh, when it's trying to, you know, clunk up. No Molly. Molly's over here trying to get into the water. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit because I want this really green down here and it's looking a little blue. Okay. And I will... I will sponge the bottom off when I'm done. Oh, that's dirty water, Molly. No, no, poi poi, poi poi. No, shoo, shoo, come on. Come on. I don't know why they like to drink this dirty water. We've got clean bowls of water all over for them. So I used to paint on the bottoms of my stuff but lately, um, when they come out of the bisque kiln or the glaze kiln, I kind of like to sand the bottom a little bit. And then I I really can't if I've got underglaze on the bottom. And then if you do sand it, you wear off part of your underglaze and it doesn't look the greatest. So I don't know. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to leave them blank. Although it's really it's really hard to leave them, to leave them blank. Okay, can you see how I get that blended? Okay, so let's put the stems in here. Oh, let me do the other one. Almost forgot. It's kind of nice to do, um, if you've got more than one to do, it's kind of nice to do more than one because while I'm working on this one, then that one can dry a little bit. Kind of like a production line. If you can see that, so hard to tell on this side of the camera if um, what really shows up. I do try to 
I watch them back before I upload them usually, but just in case uh, something's happening in the background I didn't notice. <laughs> you never know around here. Okay. I like to put my paints in here in this palette because I like to mix them a little bit. Then I can kind of get custom colors. Now this tray is from Amazon. Um, any bead, any bead tray. I think it's a bead organizer or bead tray with um, fixed grids. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a bead tray with fixed grids or non-adjustable grids, and you and that should come up. Um, Remember my, my very, I think one of my very first videos, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that. I uh, glued them all in, which you can do. Like I said, we, we still use that uh, at uh, where I work. Now, I am going to, hmm, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this turquoise because it is really strange. I'll mix it in with the rest of the turquoise. And sometimes I get, you know, the colors mixed up a little bit, but usually not enough of it ever goes over to the next color to make a difference. Okay, let's see if this works better. Not really. I. That's really weird. But we'll make the best of it. Hopefully adding uh, a little bit of water to it um, will help. Like I said, this is Speedball. They have changed their solution, supposedly. Um, now they have the, the nice wide mouth jars. So you know if you get a jar with the wide mouth on the top, but it is a new, should be a new the new formula. I used to do these with my fingers too. I tried that, but that didn't work as well as the sponge. Hopefully the person watching who wanted more instruction and less talking. I don't mean to hurt your feelings or anything. I didn't say your name. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just kind of chuckled when I saw it. People are all different, aren't they? Okay, so, um, I think I'm going to add just a touch of white just to uh, lighten up the blue. It's looking a little green, but I don't want it looking like the green at the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to get some of the green and put it down here at the bottom. And well, it's got a little bit of a little bit more blue in it than I want. I've been playing with that green all night, adding a little bit of the blue to it, and then I add a little bit of the yellow to it, so it's really not avocado. The um, When I was painting the flower stems with the avocado, it just didn't feel like um, they were dark enough, but you know, 
it's just really hard to say until it's fired. You know, you never know till it comes out of the clink, the kiln, right? Oh, and with that, that reminds me too. Um, yeah, I was painting some doodle bowls. You probably saw me paint the doodle bowls. Um, I used some of the clear glaze on those doodle bowls from work where I had added the gum solution to them. And the clear glaze didn't really, um, it didn't melt. It's really bizarre. Um, so I'm going to try and fire them again. And somebody um, wanted those doodle bowls and asked me to make them. So I feel really bad that I haven't been able to get them to her. But I just have never had my clear glaze not melt. It's it's kind of it's bizarre. It's I probably I probably put on too much because I was in a hurry. You know how that goes. You're in a hurry, but um, it still should have melted. I mean. And I checked the, the kiln, uh, put cones in there to make sure it was firing correctly. So that wasn't a problem. But yeah, that gum solution really did a weird, a weird thing to um, the clear glaze that I bought. And thank goodness I didn't add it to the whole five gallon bucket I bought because ooh, that would have been bad. And that's why I say don't ever add it to a large amount. Add it to a small amount. Um, just in case something like that happens. So, okay. So I'm going to add my flower stems. And I got a little bit of blue here. I got a little bit of this royal blue. A little bit of chartreuse. A little bit of avocado. Because I want it darker, but yet I, I want some highlights in there. So, now the first cup I painted, um, I actually painted the, um, the flowers first. But the second and third mug that I did, it's much easier to paint your stems first. So now I'm just, so I'm going to go back over these and, you know, you want to make some tall, you want to make some short, you know, it's, it's, uh, easy as you're going around here to make them all the same height, but you really don't want to. If they were all the same height, it wouldn't be very interesting, would it? When I first opened up this tray, oh my gosh, it, I think that's why whenever I'm doing a video and I'm painting, my head gets all stuffed up because the mold that grows in the red, yellow, and the orange, um, I'm allergic to mold because I think everybody's probably has some allergies towards mold. Um, you can put a little drop of bleach in each one and... Uh, get rid of that smell. If you use underglazes, you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, you can you can add a little um, bleach to it, and won't it won't affect the color. It doesn't seem to last really long though. Um, like again, I wouldn't put in a whole jar. I would just put a little bit in here. So we had to turn our clocks back today. I don't know how many of you um, are on that daylight savings time. I like when they turned it back in the spring. Actually, it's spring forward. I kind of like that because now we have more daylight. 
Like usually it's dark by six o'clock, but today it was it was light until after seven. And it's so nice to have more daylight. Although I hate it in the winter when it goes back to <clears throat> when you fall back and then it's dark at five o'clock. They keep talking about getting rid of it. I wish they I wish they would. I don't think the farmers need it anymore. That's why the that's how it started was the farmers needed that extra hour to get the crops in. But now these tractors um they got lights on them and heat and air conditioning and a lot of them are um I want to say uh like self-propelled. Like you can just turn them on and set them in the field and they run like one of those Zumba uh, vacuum sweepers. It's crazy. Okay, so there's that. Let's do the other one. Chris, is that you over there? I hope it's not a mouse. Oh, gosh. Chris. Why? Not me. It's not you? Hopefully it's Molly. <laughs> I hear I hear someone scratching down there. Probably Molly chewing on a box. We do get the occasional mice. <laughs> I don't know how they get in here, but I mean, these mice must not be too smart to break into a house with two with two kitty cats. About a month ago or so, I was laying in bed and I heard. I heard some kind of a noise out in the kitchen and I don't sleep very well to begin with so it takes a lot for me to get me out of bed. <laughs> Once I'm in bed that's it. <clears throat> Do not wake me up. And uh, I heard this ruckus out in the kitchen. I'm like, I'm like nope, nope, I am not getting up. If it's a burglar, uh, take whatever you want. I'm not getting out of that bed. <laughs> And then I heard more ruckus. I'm like, oh, maybe maybe it's the cats. The cats are just running around. So I try to go back to sleep. And and I just kept hearing noises. Next thing I know, the cats are in my bedroom and they're 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 running around. I mean they are going after something. And I thought, oh gosh. There's a mouse in my bedroom. I'm like, shoot. I'm like, well, I guess I have to get out of bed. <laughs> so I got out of bed. And of course, there's a mouse in my bedroom. And the cats are chasing the mouse. And I'm trying to chase the mouse. And then they finally got the mouse um, stuck behind a picture that's standing up against the wall of my bedroom. And... Um, it's my husband, he's sleeping through all this, of course. And uh, so they had the mouse trapped. And I I didn't know what to do because I, my husband's afraid of mice. <laughs> but uh, I thought, how am I going to get this mouse out of the house? It's like two o'clock in the morning. And that poor little mouse, he was so cute. I thought, <sighs> so... I thought I can't go back to bed because there's just no way I'm going to be able to go to sleep with a mouse in my bedroom. <laughs> and he was behind some pictures. So I knew if I moved the pictures, um, I was not going to be able to get that mouse out of there. So I thought, well, shoot, I didn't want to wake up my husband. Because like I said, he's, you know, he didn't, he doesn't sleep that well either, but 
So I sat there and I sat there and I thought, no. Finally, he woke up and he's like, what's the matter? And I said, there's a, there's a mouse in the house. And we were able to catch the mouse in a bucket after, you know, some screaming. And uh, we took the mouse outside and I let him loose in the yard. I figured he'd probably be back. <laughs> My brother always says, why do you let him out in the yard? Just kill him. But I can't. I am an animal lover. I, I could not kill that little mouse. He was just so cute, but He needs to stay out of my house. See, our house, our house is on a slab, so um, wherever there's a, an electrical line going down into the under the house, there's a hole in the foundation or a hole in the slab, I guess. And um, well, that's pretty dark. I added a little bit of blue to that. But we have snakes too, you know. If you've if you've seen any of my videos, you know we uh, we have quite a lot of snakes around the house. I don't really like those either, but they were here before us. As long as they don't get in the house. I had a baby one in the house once. It was actually under my pottery table. My son, I think I was in the shower. My son starts yelling, there's a snake in the house. And my husband didn't want to go get it. So I had to get out of the shower. He was only about, he was only about foot or 18 inches long. There you go. So, you know, as much stuff as I have in this pottery room, oh, I had to, move a bunch of stuff and and I got him in a bucket too and took him back outside. I don't know why they want to come in the house. But like I said, it's quite the adventure. Adventures around here. I think I told you we had a bird in the house too. That was a that was a couple months ago, I guess. Bird is flying around. The cats are running around trying to get the bird. It's just crazy. Crazy, crazy. Okay, so now I'm going to put the... I don't know if they're little poppies or little roses, but... Whatever they are. Let's see. I'm gonna get, I think I'm going to get a little bit... No, it's too big. All these brushes are just, they're just master touch from Hobby Lobby. I don't buy expensive brushes because I really don't take care of them very well. I leave them in the water, which you're not supposed to do. Okay, so this is red and white. And I didn't mix it up all the way. You can see that. Because I want some variation in my little roses or peonies. or They probably look a little more like peonies actually and I've added a little bit of water to them and I'm just gonna I want some reds I want some whites pinks I don't want all I don't want them to be all the same color And I will probably come back and go over these again. It's going on pretty thick. So it's probably, you know, as I'm adding these, um, it's probably like two layers considered. It's so hard sometimes, you know, to stay random. You want to put them all, to, you know, you want to put them all together. Got to be careful not to, not to put them all together.
let's see here. I think I'm gonna add a touch of red. Well, I don't really want too much. I don't want too much because I want that softness. Then I'll do the other one. And that's all I'm really going to do. I'm not going to use the black outliner today as much as I'd want to. <laughs> I had a uh, little Millie. That's Millie. Oh, she found a she found a string or a piece of paper. Hi, Millie. Hi, Millie, Millie. I moved their boxes around. They're probably wondering why I moved their boxes around. Oh, now I'm out of the picture. I'm out of the picture. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's do this one. Move it up a little bit. There we go. So here's one finished, but this is, of course, a different design. See how much brighter they get? Now this one I used transfers under here. I have to say I'm not I'm not real happy with it. I, I really don't. Um, it's a little too harsh. I really I really like how this turned out better. Yeah, I'm not real happy with that, but this one I left the bottom white. I always like to leave the inside white um, when I'm painting the outside. Um, I don't know. I think your food's more appetizing. If you have a light, a light interior color or white. It's just like when a lot of people use, um, you know, black or dark brown or a dark colored plate for their food. Which, you know, I mean, to each his own. But um, I don't think your food looks as appetizing. Because for me, when I'm eating, it's all about the food. <laughs> I got a lot of a lot of pink here left over. I'm gonna have to figure out how I can uh, maybe I can save it. I don't have any more mugs to do though. Does the time, I guess the time only changes in the US. I don't think anybody else does the time change. No other country, the US is uh, the only goofy one to do it. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's it. It's fun, been fun chatting with you girls, you guys and girls. And I promise I will upload the finished picture. I'll take this into these into work. Um, we're going to run a a kiln load. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. I hate to waste this white, but. There we go. Now we're gonna waste too much. But I, I, you know, you know I me. Mean? I hate when it's a flat color. I like when it's um, when there's different colors in there. 
I don't want them all the same color. I think I'm going to go back and add a little bit of red to some of them too. Wipe that on a paper towel, add a little bit of red. I don't want solid red, but just a just a little bit. There we go. That looks good. All right. So, so I will make sure there's no bumps on here. Turn out look nice. I like that. I hope they turn out nice and soft. I really hope they don't get too bright when I fire them. Um, <coughs> let's see, I'm going to add, where's that at? If I can find a jar. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's what I'm gonna put on here. Um, it's the Mako Stoneware. SW004 zinc free clear. This this is a bargain. This whole gallon was only $55. And you know when you buy the pints, they're $15 to $20. So this is a whole gallon. I think there's what eight? Is there eight pints in a gallon? I could be wrong. I think there I think there is though. Four, there's four. Four quarts, right? And then eight pints. But that's what I'll put on here. So what I'm going to do is, now I also use um, Amico's HF9 zinc-free clear. You should always use a zinc-free clear with your underglazes because it can affect some of them. Um, I don't think it's a, a huge problem. Um... But I have been told, even the Amico rep will tell you that um, there's a few colors it can affect. So, anyway, so what I will do, okay, I know people will ask, as soon as these are dry, I will take my fan brush. Let me try to find my fan brush. I just bought a new one. Here we go. I probably can't. Let's see if I got one I can get. We can read the label on. There we go. Okay. These, these are the best brushes known to mankind. <laughs> Not really, but kind of. <laughs> um, so this, this is a Mako number eight soft fan brush. Uh, the number on it is CB-618. If you go to buy one, don't buy, make sure it is the, the soft fan brush, not the one with 10 bristles in it, one with a lot of bristles in it. And here it is right here. Okay, so when you're brushing, when you're brushing your glazes on, don't, you know, put a little bit of glaze on here. I'm not going to do this one because it's wet. Don't put a little bit of glazes in there and then brush really, you know, I see so many people going like this, brushing real hard on there. You want to put this in your, in your, um, in your container and fill us with, with glaze, okay? Just pump it in there and get a, this whole thing with full of glaze. And then it just gently, gently brush it on there. You know, you wanna go this way 
okay all over this way gently with this full of glaze you're gonna get glaze all over the place but who cares you're gonna splatter some but you know that's okay let this dry completely then do this again and then you want to go this way okay this way the first coat this way the second coat just two coats of clear if you were going to put three coats on of, let's say a commercial glaze on something else you want to go this way this way and this way and that way um, you don't have those bare spots I see so many potters um, you know they get thin spots and thick spots and um, it's because they're not applying the glaze correctly and I know you know I'm bad too sometimes it's like you know you get glaze and it's like you know you know you're not paying attention and then then you can't remember how many coats you put on because you're talking <laughs> we do that all the time in the at the studio where uh, I work we all get chatting you know it's like how many so what you can do is if you're if you're glazing let's say you're glazing this mug what I tell them to do is dip your paintbrush in the glaze when you do the before you do the first one put this down and paint it on and then before you do the second one dip it in make another little nut line so you know you're on the second coat that way, if you get to talk and you wonder how many coats did I put on, you can look down and see how many lines are on your paper. <laughs> it's so easy to get talking, and they always say, How many coats did I put on? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how many coats you put on. <laughs> anyway, I think I've been on here long enough. Um, but I just wanted to come on and let you see. See me paint these. I sure hope they turn out as pretty as they look now. I wouldn't care if they didn't, you know, get shiny at all, really. Um, but I will add a clear because I think that a clear does protect. You don't have to add a clear. You can let them be matte. Um, some people say they're food. I mean, I know they're they're probably food safe. Um, they say they're dishwasher safe, but I just don't think they'll last very long. I've had mine, um, I've had it chip off a little bit if you don't add a clear. I just think the clear protects it. Um, so I would suggest, if you're, if it's going in the dishwasher or the microwave, I would suggest adding a clear, a clear to it. So anyway, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. And if you like my video, please share it. Um, I'm up to like 4,400 followers which is a shock <laughs> um so that's exciting i know some people have like hundred thousand um i was watching one of my favorite people today her name is uh brenda gant g-a-n-t-t -T. um she's this i think she's 78 she said um she's from alabama southern alabama andalusia and she does cooking She's a, she's a, uh, she runs the Cottle House down there in Alabama and she cooks and she, she puts a video out almost every single day, but she was saying today that she had over 3 million followers. <laughs> so I thought, well, I got a lot, I got a long way to go here, but, um, but yeah, so if you want to watch a really sweet woman, um, I'm not really much of a some of the things she cooks are really southern which you know i'm kind of a northerner and um there's things that i just don't eat <laughs> but it doesn't matter because i love her she's so sweet and um but anyway so if you want to watch uh follow someone who's really uh just full of energy god love her uh brenda gant and uh she's there's some fake people who have sites out there um but hers uh um, her, she doesn't ask you to join. So if you look up Brenda Gant and it's some club or some group that wants you to join, that's not her. She's got so many followers that people steal her account all the time. But if you see her in her kitchen, um, and she's got another book coming out too, but anyway, 
So anyway, so 4,400 is not too bad. I'm happy with that. But <laughs> um, anyway, I'm talking too much, aren't I? More instruction. Anyway, have a great evening. And um, I hope to uh, see you in the next video. If you have any questions, um, please put them below in uh, the comments and I will try to answer them. And again, you guys are so nice to me all the time and I appreciate you watching. And um, like I said, if you like the video, please share. Thanks.